My name is Derek McBride. I'm a licensed acupuncturist and strength and conditioning coach with a private practice in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. On top of my private practice, I also teach continuing education courses, specifically for acupuncturists on orthopedic testing, muscle testing, movement assessments, corrective exercise programming, and I help co-teach uh, with my mentor, Whitfield Reeves, for his acupuncture sports medicine program. I I feel like I'm in a unique position uh, coming into the acupuncture community and becoming a licensed acupuncturist after already working in the sports medicine field as a strength and conditioning coach and working along physical alongside physical therapists uh, on the like assessment and rehabilitation side of things. Uh, this is really what excites me uh, is trying to bridge these two worlds and try to make the sports medicine world really digestible for the ac acupuncture community and put it within context of how are we most likely to be using this within our clinic space, within our clinic treatment, within the flow of our, our treatments. And to make this kind of boiled down to like, all right, here's the most useful tests, here's the most useful assessments, here's how to tease out between different um, conditions that you're gonna see coming into the office. Um, and then to be able to help formulate treatment plans, not only just through acupuncture and cupping and gua sha, uh, but also through corrective exercise programmings. I always say I'm a movement therapist and like strength and conditioning coach at heart. I just really like the needle to help solve movement problems that I can't solve um, just strictly through movement. Um, so that's what I'm going to be speaking about at this year's conference. Um, we're going to go over orthopedic testing, muscle testing, movement assessments, and corrective exercise programming specifically for the lumbo pelvic hip complex. Now this is obviously something that we all treat um, many times, usually within a day, low back pain, hip pain. And you know, we all have our ways um, of managing this. What I'm gonna try to bring in um, to everyone's practice, or at least like introduce them to with, within their practice, is ways to assess anatomical structures a lot more precisely, efficiently, and quickly, and to feel a little bit more confident in your anatomical diagnosis, which then can lead into your uh, meridian diagnosis. Um, but then also to take a step further and start looking at movement patterns and how movement patterns and dysfunctional movement patterns within those joints, above and below those joints, can contribute to your patient's pain syndrome. And a big key that I always speak on and that I always try to emphasize um, and like help individuals figure out how to differentiate between is many times these movement impairments are coming from a lack of mobility or a lack of motor control. And how do we tease those things out? Because those things are going to require much different interventions. Uh, and us as acupuncturists, I feel like we're in a unique position where we already have the mental software to be able to hold these two you know, seemingly contrary ideas of something being tight or something being unstable or something being excess or something being deficient or finding excess within deficiency. You know, we already have those abilities. Um, so I feel like honestly going to acupuncture school helped me be able to differentiate these things within the movement world. And now I wanna start kind of sharing that back with the acupuncture community of here's ways that you already, you already have ways of thinking that are gonna allow you to tease these things out, but now we're gonna create systems that allow you to do so. Uh, so that'll be the second component or the second part of my course. Um, and that's like, the orthopedic testing, the muscle testing, any acupuncturist can come in, learn these tests, get more proficient in their specific diagnosis. And then the next step that we take is for those individuals that are really wanting to understand movement patterns and how those can contribute um, to a patient's pain syndrome. Um, and then how do we program for those? Right? If something's tight, generally cupping works great, gua sha works great, manual therapy, stretching, all those things. But if something's unstable, not only are those not going to solve the problem, but they can make them worse, right? So we need to be able to tease out and understand the difference, be able to assess the difference, figure out the true nature, and then program accordingly. Uh, I'll share a, uh, 
a case study that I worked on that I often use when I'm speaking about this, uh, you know, particular uh, area of like low back pain, where I had a professional MMA athlete come in uh, to my office when I was in Denver and uh, low back pain, particularly when he threw kicks. Um, and we were treating the QL, we were treating the glue me, we were assessing the sacroiliac joint. We were coming up with a good treatment plan that was reducing his pain. And then you would go back into training and it would pop out or like pop back up. And, you know, we couldn't think of this as like, well, maybe it's a capacity issue, maybe too much too soon. But I started assessing his joints above and below and found that his mid back doesn't extend and rotate very well. Now, because of that, he was shuttling too much strain into the low back when he was throwing kicks and going into rotational patterns. I needled, I changed that pattern. We solidified it with a movement, um, a corrective exercise that I'll be sharing in the course. And then we sent him on his way and um, he reported back decreased pain and he went right back into kicking the heavy bag, uh, no problem. So in these instances, you know, to take that extra step, particularly for an athletic population, to understand what the demands are of their sport and what the demands are and of the, you know, the system itself, meaning the human body, then we can start to formulate a more specific um, game plan that branches out beyond just where the local stagnation pattern is. So uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to everyone. I love sharing this information. Every time I speak on this, I always get a lot of, uh, I learn a lot as well. Uh, I love coming together with like-minded practitioners where we're all just trying to, you know, share ideas and get better. I hope that my course can be a way that we can start that conversation and then continue to move forward to better, so, uh, to, for all of us to be better. So I thank you very much.